NFL players' feedback. And the first one was, we think workaholism shows competence, but the players think it's stupid. Now, this is really interesting because there's that sort of busy work that, that people are portraying, but actually the people that you really need to influence <laughs> are potentially cynical. And when I read that in your book, I just thought a number of times I've thought about other people that does not look good. The number of times I've, I've seen athletes look and say, right, the coach is overworked. They're stressing me out. And then I've actually caught myself doing that too, where I'm, I'm locked into that cycle of, I've got to push harder. I've got to lean in more and I've got to do more. Ah, oh, hang on a minute. I probably look a bit silly, really. If I'm in a high performance environment, and I'm not actually high performing anymore because of the way I am conducting myself or that I'm so succ I've succumbed to a snarky comment about, Oh, half day is it? And I thought, no, no, I need to stay. I need to stay a bit longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take it easy um, this week. Huh? Yeah. yeah. That, that, that very act of simply asking potentially the players, <laughs> am I doing the best job possible? Could I, could I improve the way I work? Could be a very powerful way of understanding your effectiveness and breaking some of those cycles. Exactly. And again, that's that's just a regular coaching cue that we would use, you know, we've started using in in things like uh, training sessions. You know, did you get the skill that we were talking about? Do you understand it? Can you recite it? You know, a lot of Doug Lamov's kind of work around working memory and um, Etc. But yeah, so there was two examples with this, and I love that they're both from the NFL because it is the ultimate individualism display of masculinity. I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to be in the. You know, we think football coaches are bad at you know being in at six a.m. The NFL guys are like two thirty a.m. right, or or just sleep in the office. They don't even bother going. Oh, home. that's super hardcore. That is cool. They must be doing a great job. Yeah, exactly. And, and ironically, that's uh, we were just talking about attention and awareness. Like we know it's such a detailed sport that <laughs> sleeping two hours a night on the, on a futon on the, is what we've equated to, oh, I can notice the right cues that are going on in the game. But yeah, the, the, the players association started their own poll of the players that played at each team and they release them publicly on their website an example that i use is that in a well not for him i don't like coaches being fired but josh mcdaniels of the oakland raiders or vegas raiders was the example he's since been fired since the book came out so um but it was about his players reporting that they were the most inefficient with their time in the league and what they meant by that was the players reported that they didn't need to do half the things that they were doing. They didn't need to be in the meetings. They didn't need to be overbearing. They understood what the coaches were trying to tell them, but they were kept longer than their peers on other teams. And the report went in to say something along the lines of, you know, that the, the top seven teams that reported the best efficiency all made the playoffs. And so there's this kind of duality to that around the that there is a link to time efficiency. And what we mean by that is like better coaching, not more coaching, more effective coaching, actually leading to performance. And that teams that are doing well aren't necessarily working harder, they're working better. And then you've got this example of this coach that spends keeps his players too long, spends too long in meetings, but ultimately he loses his job. It's the last time he'll probably ever be a head coach in the NFL because this is his second go at it and and he's failed miserably both times. Um, and so that, that was the first example. And there's a second of, of just a former Patriots player who talks about getting way too much information and it actually slowing him down on the field. Um, you know, Rob Ninkovich is his name. He's won multiple Super Bowls in the Belichick era. 
And a, a linebacker is supposed to be, they're the cerebral players. They're the ones that are supposed to want every detail so that they can read what the opposition are going to do. And he says, I've, I've, by the end of the season, I had all these sheets of paper in the back seat of my car that I never read, too much detail. And he said it slows him down and it made him almost at a certain point be uh, a deer in the headlights. When a 220-pound running back's coming at you, you don't want to be a deer in the headlights. You just want to be able to go. And he was thinking about all this detail that his coaches had given him and it slowed him down. And so that's what I mean by that comment around our, our players don't actually, they don't appreciate the extra work. They don't think it's necessary. Um, and, uh, you know, often I think they would rather see you go home and spend time with your kids and know that you're coming back into the, you know, with, with you know, bruffed hair and having not slept on the food timer. They would appreciate that more and the idea being that that leads to more effective coaching so that you can go home and see your family because I know that that's beneficial for me as a player and I'm sure it is to you as a coach too. Um, and so, again, it's just un unpacking this idea of this display of chronic individualism that we think is great leadership and then our athletes just go, no, it's not. <laughs> 